Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine, but let's start this video from Belgrade. This video was filmed right from the place, let's watch it. Stable situation in Belgrade. And this is the Belgrade Oblast, the village of Kozinka. As you may see, according to surroundings, the special military operation goes according to plan. Yikes! Uh, so, as you can see, everything is stable in Russia, especially in the bordering oblasts of Kursk and Belgrade. Moreover, today Russia announced the evacuation of the population, even of Belgrade city itself. So they announced the full evacuation of this area near to Golovchino and also near to Shebekino. From Belgrade they want to move out to most locates. Finally, Russia is doing it, but only after the elections happened in Russia. They forcefully kept civilians under the threat out there for them to vote for Putin, that's it. Russians will also create the checkpoints on the way to Gaivarend and on the way to Shebekino. How do we know it? Well, quite said governor of the Belgrade Oblast already announced it. So we have the official statement from the governor, but if you check out all of the media in Russia, I mean the big media, like the first Russian channel and Russia 24, there will be no mentions about this some sort of the evacuation. They all still celebrate the Putin's victory. And if we check out the report from Shebekina, Putin got 100% of the votes, according to official statement from the local election office, which is quite impossible. 2,500 people voted, 100% all for Putin nonsense. Also, Russians reported that they don't have any kind of the products in their grocery stores. Yeah, obviously not in Moscow, but at some of the regions of Belgorod Oblast. Even the Russian fast food restaurant Vkusna Tochka, which is the ex-McDonald's, is closed now in Belgorod. If we measure the distance from the current front line, which is over here to Belgorod, to the city center, let's say, it's 32.99, so 33 kilometers. I do not think that the Russian opposition forces have enough resources and potential for this move. After all, Belgrade is kind of the big city and located not that close to the border. Yes, close enough for the big army, but if we speak about the Russian volunteers, no, I think they do not have enough army men and weaponry. If they could be reinforced by Ukrainian army, well, this operation in this scenario is possible. However, Ukraine is concentrating on fighting against the Russian army on the east, on the south of Ukraine, and I believe that Ukraine openly will never use its forces on the Russian territory. At least for now, those could be only the Russian volunteers. But Ukraine will conduct many more of the UAV attacks on Belgrade. President Zelensky calls it as a payback, and definitely Russians, some of them, understood that it's not a special military operation. It is a full-scale war, in which sometimes both of the sides are suffering. Now they monitor the war not through TV, but just looking at the window. Those attacks are mostly down to destabilize the Russian society and the Russian general. Meanwhile, the Russian Volunteer Corps publishes some of the video of the actual fight in Kozenka village of Belgorod Oblast. Here they ambush the Russian tank. Guys, unfortunately I cannot show you full video on this platform, so please subscribe for my Telegram to obtain more information. You may find it in the video description just below. Thank you. As Russians say, the village of Razumne, Belgorod Oblast, was targeted by the vampire MLRS system. I know what is burning out there, just some of the smoke happens. Remember I told you about the comments from the Russian people, especially from Belgrade, under the news of the first channel. Well, the first channel, Russian channel, the biggest one, decided to block the comments for everyone. I guess too many mentions of Belgrade, too many frustrated Russians. One solution, just to ban them. I can translate to you what Russians say. You are added to the black list of this community. This happened to all of those people who were writing about Belgorod. It means that for Russia, Belgorod shouldn't even exist, as I understand. Yeah, maybe after all, it's definitely a Belgorod People's Republic. Kind of the interesting program was shown on the LCI French TV. I know French, so I have to rely on some of the media forces which share this information. So as they say, this is the Colonel Vincent Arbaratier. He really talked about the possible scenario to deploy the French forces across the Dnieper River to show to Russia a red line. 
that it shouldn't go to this part of the Dnieper River. So do they really think that Russia has a potential to occupy all of its territories? Hmm. Right, nevertheless, it's just a news program. Then he said that it's possible to deploy the forces near to the border of Belarus. It could potentially secure the Kiev city. And there could be a mixed deployment near to the Dnieper River and also close to the border of Belarus. Again, guys, if you check out the Russian TV channels, they have thousands of those kind of the programs then they annex the United States, I mean Alaska, how they take all of the Ukraine, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and many more. Not even saying about their famous cartoons about the nuclear weaponry. And here the French channel did something on a very low scale but Russians just exploded. I mean their propaganda media. How France? France is going to enter the war. France is going to start a third world war. We should nuke them, we should nuke them. As usual, kind of funny to see that stuff from Russia. Meanwhile, the Russian intelligence chief Sergei Narishkin already said that France is preparing around 2,000 soldiers to deploy to Ukraine. He said that they got some of the evidence of it. French military in Ukraine will be a legitimate target of our military. They will face the same destiny as other French before in the history who entered the territory of the Russian peace with weaponry. Probably he relates to the war with Napoleon. By the way, Moscow burned down during that war. And just weather helped Russians to win. Now let's go to the military map updates. We have this military map published by Ukrainian journalists from the sensor net, I see it. On this military map you can see the amber-colored territories. Those were taken by Russians since October the 10th, 2023. So many months ago. This is the southern part of Ukraine near to Robotina. Robotina is not yet been occupied by Russians, as you can see on this map, but Russia advances from Verbova. The picture is a little different compared to what you see on the deep state military map source or from the other analytics. Nevertheless, the information is the same. Russia continued their advancement mostly in this place. This is the Liman direction, this is the city of Liman, and here Russia advances towards Terni. They have the south vector out there, but also Ukraine has a counterattack. From what I read a couple days ago, our guys were able to stop the Russian assault in this place, not letting the enemy into the village. And this is Krinky, the Kherson Oblast. Russia has their assaults and they've took the territories of Krinky not long time ago, but still Ukraine controls this bridgehead. According to the reports of our soldiers who were in Krinky, the situation there for Ukraine is very terrible. Russia sent more and more reinforcements. Yes, Ukraine before was able to repel all the Russian attacks, but with each day it's harder and harder to do. Mainly because of the ammunition shortage. But Russia uses there everything they can. They exclude the aviation bombs in Krinky because they start to lose many of the airplanes, especially on the south, but they continue to use the gliding bombs on the eastern side of Ukraine. Guys, I am not the military expert, but what was the reason to land the forces in Krinky in general? There should be something behind this operation, as for me, maybe to deflect the Russian forces towards Krinky. But obviously Ukraine is in lack of the resources to start a counterattack from Krinky. It means that the only goal of this bridge head is definitely to be under the Russian fire, to attract more of the Russian tanks, vehicles and to ambush them. Russia already lost hundreds of the vehicles near to Krinky as well as thousands of the military personnel. If that was the task, well, it is quite successful, but at the same time Ukraine also has losses. Marinka direction, very close to Donetsk, by the way, Russia has the assault vector from this side. They try to expand it to each side, especially this one, and also Russia continued their attack towards Novomikhailovka. They occupy the half of this village, but Ukraine has a counterattack. We're able to stop the Russian advancement, as in most of the cases. A Vuhlidar direction, Russia has this advancement, actually it happened long time ago, not a significant one. The south of the Donetsk Oblast, the place of the Ukrainian counterattack during the summer campaign. Here Russia took just some of the territories, that's it. 
Just a reminder, all of those amber-colored territories were taken by Russians since October the 10th, 2023, so a long time ago and such a little advancement. But the most Russian gains are in Avdivka. Here you may see many of the Russian assault attempts, attack vectors, but also Ukrainian character attack recently it happened in Berdichi. Here definitely Russia was successful. If we check out the other military map sources, you may see that Russia definitely gained some of the territories out here near to Verbova, but still unable to get to Robotina. Yes, the fighting continues very close to the central part of the village. However, Russia is not controlling this area. They were ambushed there many times probably this time too. Let's take a look at the Bahmut direction. There Ukraine was successful taking some of the ground. We have the information about it. So Rozdolivka, Mikhailovka, between there is some territory near to this road which was liberated by Ukraine. There is no information of what forces were used out there. Kind of interesting. If we check out the deep state military map, there is only one advancement near to Orlivka. If we check the timeline, it is yesterday, it is today, Russia occupied just two of those small fields. So there is no a large scale Russian attack. About the frontline images, well, you may find most on my telegram, but I guess I can show you this one over here. So this is the attempt of the Russian army to evacuate the Leopard to a five. Leopard is really heavy, so Russians used two of the towing engineering vehicles. So let's check out what happened to them. As you can see, they're moving. Definitely it is the Leopard 2, probably a 5 or maybe even a 6. And here is the FPV drone which flies towards one of the vehicles, stopping the convoy. Two of the vehicles were damaged already, both of them are on fire, so Ukraine used many of the FPV drones, but our guys didn't target the left part too, because still there's the chance for it to be evacuated from the front lines by our side. It happened in Avdivka direction, and I guess that Russians would hesitate to evacuate the tank once again. Meanwhile, the Polish president Andrzej Duda says that Russia is planning for a tank on the NATO countries in 2026. It is the first time we see some sort of this confirmation from that high official level. Before, there were just some of the rumors published with the same year, 2026. Reportedly, the information came from the German intelligence. Well, I wouldn't be surprised about it, so they say between 2026 and 2027. On his first press conference after elections, Putin stated that war is the number one priority for him, so he will continue it in Ukraine and probably start at new places. Where it's gonna be NATO countries, the probability unfortunately is very high. After lots of the critics for the previous Donald Trump speech about the NATO allies, Donald Trump says that he won't quit NATO but only if Europe pays its way. So he wants to cease far a little lowering his harsher rhetorics, but at the same following the same narrative that European countries should pay. Pay for whom? For Donald Trump? For America? There is no any kind of the legislation for them to do it. They should pay to their own budget, military budget, and all of the countries which are bordering Russia or close to Russia already pay much more than required according to NATO recommendations. Yes, those are recommendations to pay 2% of the GDP. GDP. The guy doesn't know what he talks about. A Russian Navy now has officially a new commander in charge. Alexander Mayusev, the previous commander, was dismissed. Well, I think that very soon he will find out that he has one more submarine. Once a month, usually Ukraine downs some of the Russian ship. The first Putin's official visit will be to China to meet with Xi Jinping. Probably they are preparing the escalation of the war also towards Taiwan. Yes, this scenario is also possible. I think that China really may start this operation, because they see that Western countries little by little drop the military support of Ukraine, for example. Profits for politicians are more interesting for them than securing their allies. That's why it may push China to conduct the special military operation, as they usually call it. But I believe that China will fail with it. There was the 20th Rammstein meeting. We have the good news about artillery systems. More of those will be supplied to Ukraine, but I guess not from the United States of America, because as they say, there will be no military support for Ukraine until the main bill is voted in the House of Representatives. But we still have the support 
were from Germany, from Belgium, even from Kosovo. And the Czech Artillery Initiative plays a great role this year for our country. My friends, now don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot and also you may check out some of the links in the video description just below if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.